And the mayor of Portland, Oregon, is telling the federal government he doesn't want its help after weeks of protests and unrest. And he tweeted, the best thing they can do is stay inside their building or leave Portland altogether. Joining me now is Dave Rubin, host of the Rubin Report. And Dave, let me read to you a little bit from a letter that Senators Wyden and Merkley have uh, put forward. If we could pull that up on the screen here so I can say it's they, they said we unequivocally condemn such acts of violence and any effort to target attack or silence those peacefully exercising their First Amendment rights. Well, I think everyone can agree with that. Nobody wants First Amendment rights to be infringed upon. But what about your right to protection? Yeah. You know, Dana, I'm a simple guy. I don't ask my government to do that much. But one of the things that I do ask the government to do is protect life and property. So, of course, everybody is for peaceful protesting. I haven't seen anyone across the political aisle say that people cannot uh, peacefully protest. What you can't have is rioting, looting, creating autonomous zones, places that police officers can't go, that there's some sort of secondary law enforcement system or, or a total side set of rules. I mean, these are the things that you cannot have. Um, but, you know, look, this is just consistent with what we're seeing pretty much every progressive mayor do in every progressive city, uh, whether it's Portland or Seattle or some of the things that de Blasio is doing in New York or Garcetti is doing right here in L.A. And I think the average person, you know, they're for protest, they're for the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Bill of Rights, but they do want law and order. As to whether the feds should be in these cities or not, that's an interesting debate, which is a sort of side debate on this. And maybe it's a bit of a trap mm -hmm. that they're springing on Trump, because then it'll make him look like an authoritarian that they want him to portray, uh, they want to portray him as. Uh, but people want mm -hmm. law and order. It really is that simple. You know, it reminds me back in 2005 at the lead up to Hurricane Katrina, when the state and local governments refused to um, you know, evacuate, they did not listen to requests from the federal government to do that, did not want to have the federal government come in to help. And then there was a tipping point when it became obvious that the federal government had to go in to help. And I know that we don't, I know you don't have a crystal ball there, but I do wonder if you have any insight into what the tipping point of this could be. Uh, you know, it's almost like you don't want to say what you think the tipping point could be, because it, the tipping point will be mass violence or, or serious amount of death or looting or, or even worse. Um, and then the feds will have to come in. But I think your, your analogy to Hurricane Katrina is probably right. In some ways, mm -hmm. they, they have a dereliction mm -hmm. of duties here. If you're a mayor not taking care of your city, and then you're saying, oh, no, now let the feds do it. But by the time the feds have to come in, whether it's a natural disaster or a man-made created disaster, which these riots are, it's probably too late. And then we have a whole set of other problems. So, look, if any progressive mayor is watching, it's like, just do your job. Protect Protect your streets so that your people can protest peacefully and you're protecting your citizens and your law enforcement. And then let's try to go forward. But if you yeah. can't do that, you probably shouldn't be a mayor. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.